All right, so today we'll be talking about correlations. So first of all, what is a correlation? Correlation is a relationship between two variables. So as one goes up, the other goes down, which is a negative correlation. So for example, this would be, as I take more leaf, my pain decreases. Otherwise, as one goes up, the other also goes up. And this would be a positive correlation. So as I study more, my exam scores go up. When we do correlations, we are testing for significance. So the p-value, usually p less than 0.05, and the strength, or the rho value. So what is a correlation not? A correlation is not a theory for causation. Of course, this is heard many, many times, but keep in mind, correlation is not causation. So for example, when windmills turn, wind increases. Therefore, windmills turning causes wind. This is, of course, not the case. In fact, it is the opposite. As the wind blows, the windmills begin to turn. Another great example is the ice cream sales. So as ice cream sales increase, so do shark attacks. Therefore, eating ice cream causes shark attacks. Of course, this is definitely not the case. In fact, it is a third variable, summer. So in the summer, we tend to eat a lot of ice cream, and we tend to get in the water more, so there is a greater chance for a shark attack. So what types of correlations are there? Again, there's the positive correlations and the negative correlations. But there is also strong versus weak. A perfect correlation would have a row of exactly 1.0, which is a perfectly straight line. A strong correlation, but not perfect, which is a bit more common, of course, would be when the row is pretty large, but it's not in a straight line. So all the values are close to that straight line, but they are not straight. A moderate one would be where the points are a bit closer, a bit further away, but still pretty close. And zero correlation is when it's just a blob. So keeping that in mind, let's go to faster stats. So we will go to vassarstats.net. We will click on correlation and regression. And click on the data import version. You have to scroll down a little bit before you hit data entry but I'm going to stick with that ice cream sales and shark attacks. So I will just click and drag over my 12 months for the year. Hit control C, control V. And it's very important that these match up. So this is the ice cream and sharks for January, ice cream sharks for February, ice cream and sharks for March, so on and so forth. And then click calculate. So once you do that, there are a lot of tables. So we'll just take it one table at a time. So this first table is the data summary that just gives you the sum of X. So that is the total ice cream sales, the sum of Y, so the total shark attacks. But more importantly is the second table that gives you the N value. So there were 12 months reported. From that, you can get your degrees of freedom, which is going to be your N minus two. So 12 minus two is 10. You can also get your means for each variable. So on average, between all 12 months, people were having 4.83 ice cream sales and 2.33 shark attacks. And you can get your standard deviations if you need to report those as well, as is done here. Scrolling down a little bit more, we are now around this table. And this table is great for reporting your correlation. So correlations are reported as R, parentheses, degrees of freedom, equals your row value, comma, P value. So again here, we have R, then we have our degrees of freedom, which we said was 10. We have our row value right here, which is 0.89. And we have our P value, either one-tailed or two-tailed, although two-tailed is more common. When your p-value is less than 0.001, do 
just put p less than 0.001 because it can never truly be zero. If your p-value is greater than 0.001, just report it as it is, so p equals 0.64, for example. Remember though here that the smaller the p-value, the more significant the relationship is. But just because it's significant does not mean it's a strong relationship. That would be the correlation value. So it is possible to have a technically, statistically significant effect, and yet it be very weak. The rules of thumb when it comes to strong versus weak with R is that if the rho is stronger than 0.6, and that's positive or negative, so positive 0.7 or negative 0.7, for instance, that is a strong correlation. When rho is between 0.3 and 0.6, positive or negative again, that's a medium correlation. And if it's weaker than that, it is just a weak correlation. So what are those other numbers that were in that table? Well, r squared is a pretty important number. This one is explaining how much variance is explained by our model. So when this number is high, we are making more accurate predictions that are true to the outcomes. The slope and the y-intercept show us the line of best fit, which again is y equals mx plus b. So in our case, shark attacks, equals the slope, 0.55, which is right here, multiplied by the ice cream sales, and then plus the y-intercept, although in this case it's negative, so it is minus 0.35. The other two tables talk about the confidence intervals for your row value and for your slope of the regression. Most of the time these aren't reported, or if they are, they are just reported in a table similar in, to this fashion, so don't worry about those too much. But again, remember that when it comes to significance, things can be p less than 0.001, which is very, very significant for both of these. But the r squared value and the row value can be completely different. In this case, the dots are very close to the line. We are definitely accurately predicting very consistently, versus here we are not. And that's how you do correlations.